I'm going to kick off straight away, and this is a question, I guess, is like, and it's, it's, I guess it's like one of those questions that's always asked in and around artificial intelligence, um, and it was mentioned a few times on, uh, in presentations this morning, was the destruction that's going to happen to the jobs, and based on, kind of, I guess, my role in IDA, I guess I'm looking for, for advice. How do we prepare? How do we prepare from an Irish perspective, but also, I guess, from a global perspective, for the destruction of jobs that's potentially going to happen, but also in terms of job creation, what does that look like in the future? Um, Barry, if you want to... Yeah, sure. sure. So I guess um, we shouldn't panic about this sort of thing, right? So um, you know, there'll certainly be new jobs. So um, I suppose when people talk about job replacement and displacement, that's not to mean that you know huge numbers of people are going to be unemployed. Things are just going to change. And I suppose we have no idea what the world is going to look like in five or ten years' time. Um, except, you know, we'll, we'll certainly need people to work and there'll certainly be jobs there for no other reason other than we have to pay taxes. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think th the question really just becomes, um, uh, well, I suppose, I suppose we just need to be careful that the jobs that, that we see coming on stream as automation uh, does have an effect on jobs are of a high quality, you know. So, um, and if you look at manufacturing in the U.S., for example, um, there has been massive amounts of automation in manufacturing. There hasn't been a lot of unemployment, but if, but if you look at the, I suppose, the quality of the job in terms of take-home pay, they haven't really moved since 1970. So we have, we, we have to be very careful with that sort of thing, you know. Okay, very, very good. Is there anybody else who would like to make a comment on that in terms of what do they see in the future? Actually, if you were to give a piece of advice to governments around the world, what one piece of advice, what's your number one um, priority, would you say? So if I could feed up to uh, feed up into the department that I report into, that we really need to look at this in order to prepare for artificial intelligence, and what would what would that piece of advice be, David? I guess I'll throw it in. Uh, I, I work in a university, I, sorry, designing courses, and I think education is a key thing there to see well where where are the opportunities to take advantage of this. So if you take um, lots of things that people have talked about today in terms of AI, automation, driverless cars, and things. We, we should be training people to do those jobs, um, to, to build those systems so that Ireland becomes a, a centre of excellence for those things. Yeah, but we've had numerous conversations with um, automotive uh, companies in the past and one thing that I've been trying to demonstrate is like Ireland has been building its technology capability for 60 plus years and you hear at the automotive industry they're saying that they're becoming technology companies so it's like, okay, how can we marry the two? There is a, a big opportunity there. Would um, anybody else like to... I think it's kind of fascinating that uh, you have the, uh, the tech billionaires who are uh, advocating some form of universal basic income. Um, and it makes me wonder a little bit. Uh, so, I mean, Bill Gates is on record as supporting something like this. Uh, I think some sort of tax is what he technically supports, it's some sort of tax on technology. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, I saw him give a speech at Harvard which was basically, uh, it was kind of like a political stump speech, actually. It was pretty clear to me that he's mm -hmm. thinking about running for president. And in this uh, basically political speech, he mentions we should explore the idea of universal basic income. And so I wonder a little bit, is it like, is this kind of like uh, cold fusion or something? Is it something that's like never going to happen, so it doesn't really hurt to talk about it? <laughs> right? Is, is universal basic income so completely unfeasible politically that there's not much of a downside to sort of bringing it up as a tech billionaire? Or is there actually a path there? Is there going to need to be some sort of escape valve for all of this uh, economic frustration? There is experiments happening yeah. in Canada and Finland at the moment with universal uh, basic incomes. And as I read once that even the Democrats back in the 1970s were, were a proponent of uh, universal basic income in the States. Well, there's, there's universal basic income in Alaska called the People's Dividend, That's so um, it already exists. I think uh, I'm a huge fan of the, um, of the idea of universal basic income for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, one being, you know, these sorts of... So, so people might wonder, well, where the hell is the money going to come from, right? So, but if, you know, there are incentives, I suppose, and um, penalties you can in introduce in society that if jobs are displaced and they're not replaced with high-quality jobs, that there should be almost a, a penalty imposed on, um, 
on the organization that, that, that does that, right? So there's ways of fueling, of, sort of, you know, taxing of taxing that kind of thing, right? So, um, and if you, do, if you do the numbers, it does kind of work out. In terms of Ireland, a, base, a universal basic income, I think, would work out at about 900 euros per month per person, which might sound like an awful lot of money, but it isn't. Um, um, so I'm a big fan of, of the idea of a basic income. And the other thing is, you know, it creates a space for people to be creative and people to be more altruistic and all this sort of thing. So it's, it's all rising tides raises all boats, I would say. Yeah, I guess I read somewhere recently, say, like if there was a universal basic income that it's linked to further education and continuous education, which is, I think would be a really good idea. Um, Dr. Scanlon. Uh, question in from John. Um, do you see a day coming when speech recognition will help parents understand their own ch children? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I always say that it's uh, the basis for our, our uh, technology working is the opposite of that. It's a case of if, another ad if an adult who is not a parent can understand the child, then our system can understand it. But if you're saying, like, you know, why, why won't your system understand little Johnny, I'm like, well, if you're, you know, if, if a random adult can't understand little Johnny, we're not going to do any better than that, you know. Maybe in the future, there are some systems that do customization for users who have uh, disabilities. So basically, they do a lot of training on them, um, and then they have an app that's personalized to them, and then actually tries to do translation. So that actually is, there's a company in Israel that does that, and they do it very effectively. Um, they're still working on it. So there is technologies that do that, yeah. W what we try and do is do a general approach that it will work for everyone. So you tend to go one or the other. Uh, yeah, if I, I, think, uh, I think certainly um, there'll be voice technology that can understand in terms of the content. But um, I, I think can understand, to understand what's behind the content, so how the person is feeling and so on, you, you, do need prob you probably do need other, other sorts of technologies. Like, for example, if you're trying to determine if somebody is lying, it's, it's impossible to tell if somebody's lying just from, the, just from how they speak and the content. And it's also just, uh, you need you know, more sophisticated sensors to look, look at blood flow in the face and so on. It's like lie um, So all, all these sorts of things, you know, so there's, you know, in terms of understanding really fundamentally what the person is saying, then I think you need, you know, there will have to be a sort of a combination of technologies. Okay. Soapbox product two. Yeah. <laughs> um, Paris, I have a question in from um, Ashish. Um, in most of the sentiment analysis, uh, can we further zoom in to explain which are random and don't uh, follow the trend? Um. Yeah, I guess so. So, like, you can obviously look at uh, patterns. You can compare, um, you know, the current status with uh, the previous states of uh, sentiment in the data and see, try to understand if it's an anomaly or if it's actually, um, you know, normal. Um, so, I guess that's how that problem is often tackled. Okay, very good. And just time for one last question. Um, this is from Stephen. Does the panel believe strong AI to be practically possible, yes or no? No. Practically possible when? Yeah, practically when? Possible. <laughs> possible. Tomorrow, no. Possible, no. I, um, I, I guess... It depends on the generation you're talking about. You know? If you were to put a timeline around it, so the barrier Never. say no. Never. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I don't see why not, but I think we're miles away from it. Um, so it's it's way way in the future. So we don't need to worry about. Yeah, we don't. Our kids need to worry about it. We don't need <laughs> armies of the future. Being <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so some people in the audience might not, might, might not know what strong AI is. So strong AI is basically is a system, is an artificial mind that is identical in every way to the human mind. And I, I I say no, because I don't even think it is within the realms of human capability to understand our own minds. So it 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 requires that we can not only so sort of stand outside ourselves, but we can understand fundamentally what it's like to be human. And I, I think just from a philosophical point of view, we just can't achieve that. It's like, it's like how do you measure intelligence and how do you measure our consciousness? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's achievable within a few decades. Um, In a few decades. Yeah, I think obviously it's not a linear thing, so we can't like predict when it's going to happen with linear thinking. It's going to be like you know, a couple of exponential events stacking on top of each other that will get us there. And is that the singularity? Is that what you associate with the singularity? Like, Eventually it will become singularity, but I think general AI will happen before singularity. David? Uh, I think we're a pretty long way off from any sort of general purpose intelligence. I think, when I think of AI, I think of something like Alexa, right? You might have all these really specific skills. These specific skills may even be superhuman, um, but I don't really think 
uh, any sort of general purpose human-like intelligence is, is going to happen in the near term. I also question whether it's even necessary, right? If you're able to sort of integrate all these really specific superhuman skills, you know, who cares if you really like has a personality or appreciates poetry or whatever. I don't, I don't even know that that's necessarily relevant. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, I would also be a, a cynic because I don't, think, I don't think we will want it. Like in the sense, I don't think there's a, you know, whatever the problem is, whatever the question is, I don't think, you know, singularity or, or developing a strong AI is a solution. Um, you know, technology has always been, there's always been the sort of argument in technology between, you know, does technology enhance and augment or does it replace? Mm -hmm. And augmenting has generally, almost always, uh, won out with the exception of things like cars replacing horses and so on. But, you know, the, um, I think we won't, we probably won't want it, even if it was possible. But I don't think it is. Final words to Patricia? Um, I don't think you can stop progress. I don't think even if, if, if it's not necessary, if it's not wanted, it's still going to happen. Somebody's going to do it. So I think you kind of have to plan for that inevitability. Maybe it's not in our generation. Maybe it's the next, next one. But yeah, you can't stop progress. And unless everybody just downs tools right now, something's going to happen and needs to be managed and needs, you know, Okay, so it sounds yeah. like that we don't need to worry for the time being. No, just for now. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, first of all, I'd like to make a, a thank everybody on uh, the panel today and thank them for their really interesting uh, presentations and, and insights into what's going on from a national and international perspective. I really enjoyed your presentations. Um, finally, they're during lunch run in quickly, get your food. Uh, there'll be a talk on GDPR and privacy on the green stage during lunch and an innovation talk at the experience area. area. And on that, uh, I'd like to wrap up this session. Thank you very much.